including a TKO investors call, where I think the most newsworthy thing really was the announcement that Raw is going to remain on the USA Network for all of 2024. The deal was expiring in September, and of course the Netflix deal was starting in January, which left several months with no Raw. But now we know that Raw will remain on USA, and they are doing it for $25 million, Yeah, which tells you that uh, the ball was in USA Network's court. Because yeah. twenty five million for three months of raw is a steal. Yeah, but they had budgeted zero dollars for that period. I mean, they thought that you know if they couldn't get it on raw, they were you know I don't know if they would put it on YouTube or what. I mean, it was uh, when they budgeted for the year, they budgeted zero dollars for raw for the last three months of the year. So it's actually when it comes to the financials and everything, it's twenty five million more dollars than they expected. It is a steal, though, but. I mean, what what they weren't expecting anything with that three months because what are you going to do? Like, what company is going to spend any money for a three month show that you're losing to Netflix right away? It's a lame duck show. You have no, you know, it's of no value. I mean, yeah, you get some ratings for a couple for thirteen weeks, but it means nothing in the long run. So, um, it wasn't like that they had a, you know, they didn't have like a lot of leverage on anybody for this one. So at least they stay on. They don't have to move twice, you know, like if they move to another station or move to a streaming place and then had to move to Netflix or something like that. So, um, yeah, the big thing really was the... Well, um, before we get to that, is it is it uh, other deals that expire in January? Is it Netflix not being ready until January? Why Netflix did this did, deal begin in January? Netflix didn't want it until January. But is there a reason why? Um, they didn't want it until January. They were the balls in their court too. Well, I know that, but let's just put it this way, okay? Let's say that you and I are Netflix, all yes. right? And the WWE uh, deal ends in September. Yeah. Okay. Do we say, hey, let's pick it up like the week after the USA thing ends when you know Is, people saw it last week? Net Netflix is oh, let, oh, or oh. let's have them, uh, you know, go dark for three months Netflix, and then we'll pick them up. Netflix is a worldwide company, and all of the deals that they were picking up expired. In December, at the end of December. Okay, so that was my question. They they had they had deals in in Canada and in England and everywhere, and they all expire at the end of. Okay, so December. that's that's why it was January. That's why it's January. Okay. Yeah. All right. Netflix signed them for January, and they wanted you know a year you know a, a ten year deal January to January. They had the ball in their court. They didn't want an October to October deal. They wanted a January to December deal. So um, that was what it was. Obviously, look. Um, obviously they didn't want to pick it up early because if they wanted to pick it up early, they could have got it, you know, but then the whole thing is, is then it's only for the United States. I mean, it's already a situation where they wanted everything and because WWE had made the deals for the United States for, um, SmackDown and for, uh, NXT before the Netflix deal, they can't get, you know, either of those deals for five years. So, but for everywhere else in the world, they're getting all the shows and they're getting, the pay-per-views and they're getting the essentially the network whatever they want to pick up in the network which who knows how much they want but they have the rights to all of it and nobody else is anything they don't pick up is going to disappear into the abyss you know in the rest of the world i mean we'll still have peacock you know whatever peacock has put up for the united states market for until whatever it is 2006 i think is when it, that one expires so the other big thing really was, um, I mean, there's a lot of big things, but the, the big one was when they were talking about the, um, you know, and it's one of the reasons why um, TKO for quarter one had uh, $249.5 million in losses because uh, and it did not make a profit. It made, but that is all due to them taking that $335 million Settlement and there's also other legal bills that have to do with the Vince McMahon case that I think puts it up to about 353 million or over 350 million though um, But 335 million from the uh, the Kung Lee UFC lawsuit. They're putting it all even though they're not paying it in um, They didn't pay it in that quarter. They paid a hundred million in that quarter. They're charging it all in this that quarter So it's all taken care of they're actually gonna pay as I said, they paid $100 million already. They're paying another $100 million before the end of the year in quarter four, and then they're going to pay the last $135 million 
in the second quarter of 2025. But the key story, which is actually huge, is that all they're doing is paying money, nothing else. Yes, um, there are no structural changes to the company right. as a result that, of this lawsuit. Or, or any changes as far as contracts, as far as championships. I mean, the whole... I mean, when, when this lawsuit was filed in 2014, and it was actually originally filed in San Jose, and then it was uh, moved to um, Las Vegas because it was suing UFC, and, and UFC had the right for all lawsuits to be in Vegas or in Nevada. So I was there day one, and I will say this. When this lawsuit was filed in 2014, the idea that they got $335 million as a settlement uh, would have been unheard of. So in that sense, it was a giant success. However, the key thing that they were suing for was to make changes in the MMA landscape to make things better for fighters in the long run to, you know, have basically have the Ali Act apply to the fighters, um, you know, have um, essentially open bidding for fighters. You know, like in real championships, like like boxing has, and trying to get the salaries to boxing levels. You know, like boxers make, you know, for for um, if you look at what these boxers make, that don't draw anywhere near the revenue that the UFC fighters draw, um, and they make far far more because it's a free agent thing. You know, there's all these promoters who are bidding for um, the big fights and real championships and things like that, and and. The idea of the lawsuit was to create that environment. And while everyone's getting a payoff, you know, I mean, I guess like the average fighter is probably going to wind up with about 140,000, um, you know, that, that fought regularly in the UFC and all that. But at the end of the day, there's no changes. And that was the thing they were fighting for from the very beginning. And I think it's going to be very interesting because the, um, the, the loss, you know, like nobody is allowed to really talk about the thing until it's ratified by the judge. And at that point, it's going to be very interesting because I'm really curious um, as to why they settled. I mean, obviously, there's that fear that they spent 10 years of work, uh, the lawyers, because the lawyers were the ones who made the, the, uh, the deal, that they spent 10 years of work. And if they don't settle... It's possible they could have gone in front of a jury and gotten no money at all, failed in the lawsuit. This was guaranteed $335 million, which is a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Uh, the lawyers are going to make a killing for their work. So, I mean, in that sense, financially, you know, everyone's making money. $335 million is not, um, it's not a small amount of money, but it's also not so much money that this company because of the incredible profits they make, especially on the UFC side. You know, it's like of every dollar that UFC takes in, 60% is profit because they basically underpay. Um, they get, you know, the amount of money they're getting, you know, um, in revenue is incredible. I mean, almost every show they're doing now, they're getting a site fee, Um you know, which in the, these site fees are millions of dollars. That's guaranteed before selling tickets. And they're selling tickets and doing multi-million dollar gates every time out. And the pay-per-views are guaranteed. So it's like whether they have, if they put on a pay-per-view like that last one, where I don't know what kind of buy number they did, but I'm sure it wasn't big. Um, you know, they still, it's still guaranteed. You know, it's the money's guaranteed every year. So they're in a... An unbelievable situation and yeah it's 335 million is a lot of money but um it's it it's it, it doesn't hurt that bad it doesn't hurt them that bad because you know i mean they're look they're paying um about 250 million a year in just interest on the debt you know so that's that so if you talk about like they have this year, when you talk about those two things combined between the legal bills and the interest, that's six hundred million dollars for the year in those costs alone, and they're still probably going to end up. Um, well, they are going to end up profitable for the year. 
you know, not greatly profitable, but they will end up profitable for the year because WWE's a profit machine and UFC is an even more of a profit machine. Um, and they're trying to get WWE up. You know, one of the things that they're looking at doing for WWE, I mean, if you look at like the breakdown, WWE takes in um, more revenue and ticket sales because they run a lot more shows. Um, they take in slightly more money in TV rights uh, worldwide and, 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 and more in merchandise as well. But where UFC has a big advantage is UFC's sponsorship money is way, way up, far bigger than WWE. And one of the things like the, the prime deal for uh, all the pay-per-views um, and the the site fees and things like that, this is the stuff that they're working on, along with saving 50 to $100 million by having um, the two companies merge as one so you have the same sponsorship team that works with UFC and has gotten UFC these deals that is now the team working on WWE trying to get the same thing. Or the Saudi deal, which, by the way, there was a, um, some some changes in the Saudi deal. You know, this is Vince McMahon was the one who put the Saudi deal together. But uh, now it's Nick Khan and Dana White. And uh, they were going to do the one Saudi Arabia show for $20 million, uh, which is just going to be a, a fight night, not a pay per view. They are going to do a pay per view in Saudi Arabia, so they got a second show. I don't know what the deal is, but I've got to think it's fifty million or more. But it's because they're not doing a pay per view there for less money than WWE is, um, because the UFC pay per view is far more valuable than WWE pay per view. Um, and Saudi Arabia is sponsoring the Sphere show in September. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.